Hello everybody. So photo forensic is a term that's usually revert either to the profession dedicated to the uh, digital image authentication to determine the authenticity or it may refer also to the capability of digital forensic software to find or to identify the picture of the the picture of or the photo this technique has been designed to identify the source of digital image or to recognize or to determine whether the content is authentic or modified or manipulated without the knowledge of any prior information about the image under analysis. Okay, now I'm in the forensically beta. It's the online uh, tool to to conduct uh, the photo forensic uh, I will put the link in the description of this video so this is the the sample the picture sample that's uh, provided by the uh, the online tools so what I like to show you is uh, it will be pretty straightforward uh, I'm gonna use this uh, image so this is the original this is the authentic uh, picture of the some kind of invoice and this is the image of the picture that's been uh, modified modified or mani manipulated so let me Let me open it up with the preview. So this is the original. And this is the the fake one or the modified picture. So this is the original, this is the modified. So now let's take a look at or let's uh, drag the image and drop it in the for a second the beta uh, this tool this online tools has a very nice very nice menu or very nice feature that uh, we can use but for this video I'm gonna I'm gonna just jump to the uh, error analysis. As you can see, uh, this is the the date of the voice invoice. And this is the price, the price section or the total the total price. Now, there's nothing suspicious because uh, the error level is uh, is quite similar. It looks similar to me. But let's go to the noise analysis. Now we can see this is the noise analysis with this uh, value. This is the date section. And this is the total price section. If we go up and jump to the magnifier, you can also see there's nothing suspicious. Now uh, let's grab the or uh, let's track the the fake one or the modified one. This one and drag and drop it into the forensic forensic clip data. Uh, 
in the magnifier section we can also see there's nothing really suspicious so now let's go to the error level analysis section now we start to see something a little bit suspicious because between this uh, date, the month and the year it shows up with the different level of error we can also <coughs> we can also see here you can see this is this is much brighter than this uh, number this is the 8 number this is much brighter and this one is less darker compared to this number and also we can see here now let's go to the noise analysis we can also see the noise that's uh, right on the year section is it's like disappear or is is uh, blank or black but if we go to the left side to the uh, mark and the date you can see it's uh, so much brighter and there's nothing you can see here and if we go down here to the price the total price section the number 8 or the 8 number is disappearing or black out nothing we can see but it's uh, different when we go to the right side we can see the noise level of the number 9 or 9 number is pretty visible So from this uh, analysis using the forensically beta, we can conclude that this is exactly the modified image compared to the compared to the original one. And this online tool also has a feature to show us the metadata of the image. So So this is the metadata of the image. It reveals or it tells us there's a picture taken by iPhone iPhone 6 plus. Even it also has a data of the day that the picture was taken. And this is a thumbnail analysis. And this is a JPEG analysis. And this is the string analysis that, uh, for the sake of investigation, we might we might consider to copy and paste it. As we can see, there's. Uh, something different in the metadata of the uh, the modified or the fake image which uh, which is in this section you can see that uh, 
the picture or the image has been modified using by using Adobe Photoshop. And the string also shows us that uh, the picture has been modified by using Adobe Photoshop. Okay, now uh, now I like to show you uh, in very quick way about the video enhancement by using. Uh, Adobe Premiere and Final Cut Pro. So this is the footage of the CCTV. So if I play in the source panel, this is the original or the authentic of the CCTV footage that I grabbed from the us iStopFollow.com If we go to the uh, source, the folder source uh, You can see the size of the file is 1.4 megabyte Let me just reveal the info So the size is only uh, one four point megabyte, and and the source of the footage is from the I stop photo, and this is dimension, the demand dimension of the uh, footage, which is uh, six. 640 by 360 pixel so if now I drag and drop it into the sequence as you can see the size of the footage are small compared to the uh, the uh, the frame size of the program panel here. Why? Because the size of the program panel obviously is uh, larger or bigger than the size of the video footage. Let me show you. Let me go to the sequence setting. Here we can see the size of the uh, sequence set setting. Uh, 1440 pixel by 1080 pixel which is uh, also the size of the uh, pro program panel uh, video viewer so uh, what you can do is if you like to uh, magnify or do you like to zoom in with the with the with this uh, video clip all I can do is just simply drag the video clip accordingly maybe this is good now now if I we, if I can play it, if I play it now, so if we go to the property of the a video clip the data shows 
we can see this is uh, the same image size this is the same image size with the uh, data that we saw earlier in in the in the, in the source folder Now you might also consider to if your investigate if your investigation require you to uh, magnify this video clip in order to be able to investigate in more depth way. So you might want to uh, render the, this video clip first. So now I just click render selection. Now the render has been completed. Now I can go to the export to export this uh, file project into video format so let me copy this uh, oh so sorry so let me rename it as the copy so let me rename it as the uh, file copy and then now just click save and then let's double check in the section okay and then let's hit export now and we can just wait now for the encoding process to complete now we can go to the finder and this is the the copy one that's been exported that's been just exported so if we grab the info of the file you can see now the different the different information that we see here now the size or the, the dimension of the video clip has been enlarged and this is the original dimension or original size of the original video clip Let's play the original video clip first. As you can see, the quality of the original video clip actually is good. Sometimes the investigation requires us to enlarge or to magnify the source of the video clip. So let's let's play the copy one. So this is the video clip that's been exported and in and enlarged or magnified before, and it's obviously not so good enough.
So everything, I must say everything uh, depends on the quality of the source video clip. So if the source of the video clip is already pretty good then you don't need to enlarge or to magnify it by using any video enhancement tool that's been that's available. So now let's try to the let's try to see how it looks in Final Cut Pro. So this is the this is how it looks in Final Cut Pro. So now let's export this video clip. Now all we need to do is just wait for the spotting, you know, for the spotting process to complete. Now the spotting process has been finished. So this is the result. 55.4 megabytes. Let's play it quickly now. And if we compare with the original video clip, obviously it's much clearer and much convenient for us to see or to watch this video clip because the actual quality of the original video clip is pretty good already. So no need to magnify it for the investigation purpose.